and a half inch plates are sanded as well, but the three connector bands are not. All right, it's time to cut this acrylic tubing to size, so I'm using a chop saw to trim the edge smooth. Then I'll measure seven inches and cut nice and slowly so that I don't chip the plastic. As the blade cuts, the friction also helps heat the plastic, leaving a fairly clear edge. After I've cut five inches of the two inch tubing, it's time to make some connections. With some gentle persuasion, I've managed to fit the large acrylic tube into the cleanout adapter. But before we push them together, let's add a liberal amount of clear silicone caulking all around the outer base. This will also go on the inside, being very careful not to get any silicone on the threads. Now we can use a rubber hammer to tap the tubing all the way into place and clean up the excess silicone. Paper towel works well, and in a few minutes, it's all cleaned up. Now we can flip this over and repeat the process of attaching, caulking this part and this part, tapping into place, and cleaning up the excess. While I'm in the mood for cleaning, I'll use my adhesive remover to assist in cleaning off the UPC stickers, then give everything one final wipe down. I'm going to seal the bottom with a 4 inch ABS cleanout plug and some ABS cement. The gooey black cement is applied to the threads of both parts, then I'll use this piece of scrap wood from my Solar Scorcher frame project to help screw it in tight. The excess is removed and we can let it sit here to cure. While that's drying, let's get to work on making the bubbler. I want to attach this quarter inch 90 degree elbow to the cap, so when the stickers are removed, I'll grab my half inch drill bit and a tap. The hole is drilled in the center, then tapped at 18 thread, just before adding pipe tape to the elbow adapter and screwing into place. When that's tight, and I repeated the exact same process with the other cap, I'm happy to see they fit snug on the acrylic tubing. It looks unfinished though, so I'm going to use these top pieces from two trap adapters to slide onto the tubing first, and now when I add the cap, they screw together, giving this piece a clean professional look. Okay, now it's time to work on the generator plates. Similar to the bubbler caps, I'm drilling a half inch hole into the top of the 4 inch cleanout plug. When that's tapped to 18 thread, we can add pipe tape to a 3 8 inch swivel elbow and screw that into place. You can see that this swivels 360 degrees, and that's mostly for convenience. Using a 5 16 drill bit, I'll make holes on either side of the cap, and these will be for attaching the generator plates. I cut this hole a little close to the edge, but no problem, my belt sander easily rounded the edges, and now it's a perfect fit. Next, I'll mark the two smaller bands at about 2 and 3 quarter inch and use my bench vise and a rubber hammer to bend them to 90 degree angles. The 6 inch piece is marked at 1 and 3 quarter inches and 4 and a quarter inches, then bent into a U shape. A 5 16 coarse thread nylon bolt is cut into two pieces 4 inches long. I'll get some nylon washers ready and add two stainless steel jam nuts to the end of each bolt. The bolts are fitted with two of the connector straps and one of the smaller plates, then a plastic washer is added on each bolt. These washers are 3 quarter inches in diameter and about 0.06 inches thick. Another 1 and a half inch plate is added and secured with a nut on each bolt and now the big plates can go on. I'm stacking these in the order of plate, washers, plate, nuts and repeating until I've got a total of 8 plates in place. This is the center of the generator and the other connector strap is added at the top and secured with another nut. I'll add one more nut to the bottom to compensate for the gap and then get back to my routine of adding plate, washers, plate, nuts, until I run out of big plates. The two smaller plates are added last, and now all we need to do is trim down the bolt ends to about half an inch, so we can snap the bottom connector into place, add a nut, and tighten. The other bolt also gets a finishing nut, and then is trimmed down, and now we just need to turn the generator around and move these screws so that we can tighten the inner ones. The generator plates are done, and looking very nice, so let's connect them up to the 4 inch plug. To do that, I'll add a nut to the 5 16 inch by 2 inch stainless steel bolt and push them through the hole in the right connector strap. This quarter inch washer is stainless steel on one side and rubber on the other, and I'll push that down the bolt with the rubber side up. That's all repeated on the left side, and now the cap is placed over the bolts. Two more washers are added, this time with rubber side down and secured with another nut. Using an Allen wrench, the nut is tightened securely and then a few more nuts and metal washers are added to the post for convenience. This piece is finished. I'm really happy with it, and when I dry fit it into the casing and screw it into position, I'm starting to get excited. We're going to need a way to secure the bubbler to the side, so using some leftovers from the 2 inch pipe, I'll very carefully cut two 3 quarter inch thick circles, then use a wood 2x4 to hold the piece flat while I trim off the top. What I've done is created a clip for our bubbler, and you can see it clips easily onto the tube and holds it firmly in place. The other circle is cut, and a belt sander used to match the pieces as closely as possible. I've got some leftover acrylic rod from my fire piston project, and I'll cut off two pieces about one and a half inches long. 
I'll use some acrylic glue to secure the clips to the connector rods, and after two minutes, they're firm, but will still take over two days to fully cure. While those are setting, I'll use scissors to cut my poly tube at 20 inches and another piece at 2 inches. The 2 inch piece connects to a one way check valve and gets inserted into the swivel elbow. This will prevent anything from flowing back into the generator. The 20 inch tube goes on the other end of the valve and then connects to one of the bubbler elbows. It looks like we're ready to attach the clips to the body, so let's use the bubbler body as a form for spacing the clips and with the generator on its side, find where it balances. That looks good there, so acrylic glue is added to the clips and replaced on the body. When it sets, I'll use a little more glue in the gaps and remove the bubbler to let it cure. In the meantime, we can ready 6 cups of distilled water and some flakes of potassium hydroxide. 4 teaspoons of flakes will act as a catalyst to help the electricity flow. So when they're stirred in, we can open the generator body and attach a coffee filter to filter the fluid into the super clean casing. The filter is removed and thread tape is added to the cap, then the generator plates are slowly inserted into the solution and screwed in watertight. To finish up, we can remove the top cap from the bubbler, add some water, and screw it back together. The remainder of the poly tube is attached to the bubbler elbow, and there it is! A sexy looking hydroxy generator. This system produces an extremely powerful oxyhydrogen gas. Running on two car batteries, it'll make about 5 liters per minute, and when the gas is used, it simply turns back into water. The amount of water already in this system is enough to produce thousands and thousands of liters of fuel. Some people say that this is the fuel of the future. Whether or not that's true, the amount of power in the gas is humbling. Well, there's how to build a simple water fuel converter. If you like this project, perhaps you'll like some of my others. Check them out at thekingofrandom.com. This is my newest cell, a dual coil one eighth of an inch three sixteen L stainless steel wire or rod. This is the grade of the stainless steel wire. And here's my baby in plain tap water. As you can see, nothing comes up. It's just a very limited production since the water is not conductive. Let me add a couple spoons of baking soda. Two spoons like this. It is drawing 20 amps with that amount of baking soda. Here we go again with one more spoon of bicarbonate. I have to go to the phone. Here we go again with another test and the view from the top, from the beginning. One, two, three. This is almost explosion like. Here's my little cell. I will disassemble it now. This is a very primitive attachment I made here, but I didn't have any other possibilities. Here we go. 
This is the negative. This is the positive. And this is the smaller coil. I made two lines of holes to hold the, the double coil. And here you have the entire setup. It is four inches by less than five, uh, two inches. Four by two. One eighth of an inch thread. But I have to tell you, this kind of setup is really hard work. And that's it. Here you have the lovely coil. You see? It, the coils go one, this one go this way, and the other one goes this way, so that they cross actually, cross pattern. I hope I can measure the production, but I guess uh, it should be somewhere around uh, one liter or so. Now watch this. This is a marine threaded wire. On the other end there's a thread. And you see it's made out of little tiny wires. And this is an idea that came from a YouTuber who saw my videos and suggested I should try because there is more surface in this kind of wiring. If you take marine wire, it has the grade of the 316L and it's good. And watch what we made. A spiral made out of this very flexible, you see, very flexible thread. So you don't have, if you don't have the possibility to, to make a spiral because you're not good, you're not doing, you can take this, this kind of wire, and I'll show you here. See, you put all the holes in here. I, I make it shiny so you can see it. You have a, all the holes drilled and you just put it in like you are sewing something. You can maintain the distance here and the spacing of the wire by adding a piece of acrylic or plastic with the drilled hole at the same distances that you have here. You put it in this position and you pass and you pass your, your thread in it. So you have a distance keeper in between. Now let's have a look what this sucker is capable of. Same water as before with a spiral and here we go. Here we go with the amp reader. It's drawing about 17 amps. Which is very good. For this time, I think this is all. This was a rather a quickie for my standards but uh, I hope you will have enjoyed this new possibility and thank you again to the guy who sent me this uh, this link this message I think he posted it and here you go how you make a spiral Very simple. Goodbye.